Today I'm going to make a video about another art technique that I learned in our Magpie's Nest community art group. And it's another thing that Shalimar, and who is Shalimar? I mention her quite a bit. Shalimar is actually my pottery teacher, but she's also a big fan of mixed media art. And she showed us this very unique process that involves using metal tape to create an embossed metal finish on a surface and she was using it to cover a book and I'm going to show you some small pieces, uh, art artist trading card size pieces and I had to film this video several times to get it to work somehow I'm using a new camera and somehow each time I filmed it only part of the process got filmed it was a different part of the process each time so I've cobbled together three different takes to make up the whole process. It's all there, it's just in all in different bits. So you'll notice that the sample that I'm working on changes back and forth from time to time. So the procedure is all there in the correct order, but you'll find me working on a little creature, You'll find me working on a butterfly design and you'll also find me working on a random piece that has some puzzle pieces and other little bits and bobs. So if you're curious about what I'm talking about, here we go. Oh, and I also want to mention that this video is dedicated to Deborah. Deborah is one of our regular Magpie's Nest attendees, but she had to miss the session when, when Shalimar showed us how to do this particular process. So I asked Shalimar, and Shalimar said it was perfectly okay for me to demonstrate her process, and Deborah, here it is, so I hope you enjoy. And what I'm going to use for this is a piece of card, and I use the back page off sketchbooks so that's what I'm going to use for the base for my card you'll need some metal tape it comes in a big roll and I've just got a small small piece here. and I've got an assortment of different things with texture and raised objects that I'm going to use and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a layer of glues to my surface because I need to attach the objects temporarily. Once, there are, once the objects are covered in tape, they're not going to go anywhere, but while I'm laying them out, I don't want them to be sliding around. So I'm gonna think about what I might want to do. I've got all kinds of unusual bits and bobs here, and not planning this really, I'm just kind of winging it as I go along. This one I am sort of making something recognizable, but you certainly don't have to. I think that's it for my composition. There. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to cover this entire surface with this foil tape, but I don't want to use big pieces, so I'm going to cut the tape down into smaller pieces, and the, the ultimate size of your tape will really depend on the surface area that you want to cover and how textured your objects are, and I found that smaller pieces worked a little bit better but I think if you've got a large area that you're covering you might want to use bigger pieces because it can take quite a while. So you need actually quite a bit of this tape and I think this idea of cutting the tape into smaller pieces is brilliant. Push push things down as well as I can with my fingers into the grooves. The trick to getting the tape opened is to flick the corner and stretch it a little bit 
and then you want the tape to overlap the other pieces that you've already got there and you can push it down with your finger as much as you can into place. You'll just keep going, overlapping the edges. So some of the other members of our group are covering all kinds of things. Somebody's covering a mini suitcase. Somebody else, other people are covering boxes. They're using this technique for the covers of handmade books that they're working on. It's all kinds of applications and it really does look very cool like aged metal once you've finished. And I think that the bigger pieces work well into the corners. There, I got a lot, a lot of surface area covered there. But I want it to be well overlapped and I'm going to clip the corner so there's less bulk right into the corner here. You don't really need to, you can just fold them over. And this little scrap I'm going to save because I can use it later on. Overlap, fold it over. I'll save this piece too and I'm saving it on the on the backing that I've peeled off. I'm going to have to cut some more of the tape because I'm starting to run low. That's okay. You do need quite a lot of this. Even if you think you've finished, you'll need more. So the next step is to burnish the tape. And that means rubbing it in rubbing it into all the little crevices and crannies but I really want all the texture of my objects to show up so you can use all kinds of different things to burnish your shapes so I've got a wooden chopstick, a metal knitting needle, a plastic sewing needle and you can use the end of a paintbrush as well. I wouldn't use anything sharp as much as possible you don't want to be puncturing the, the tape. You just want to rub it into place and you can decide which tool you works best for your purpose and it probably depends a lot on how how tight your edges are, your corners are. And this part is actually this the part of this whole process that takes the longest. And as you're doing this you will lightly discover that occasionally your tape will break. And that's where these little bits come in handy. Take a small piece of tape and then stick another piece of tape on top of the broken area. And that's kind of the genius of using these, using small pieces of tape that you can go in and cover up any areas that get damaged. But you can see why you wouldn't want to be using anything too sharp, like a sharp needle or anything like that, because that would definitely tear the tape or break the tape. Now this metal tape, you have to make sure that you get tape that's actually metal, not metal colored plastic. And it has to be quite thin. I have some copper foil tape at home and I tried to do this process with it and it did not work at all. The copper tape that I have is just too too thick and heavy and it was just I couldn't get it into all the little nooks and crannies. Well oh, there I'm breaking up another area there making holes there. I'm going to cover those up as well. Let's see there. When I first learned about this process using those these little bits. I thought that the cut edges of the tape were going to be distracting, but they really aren't. They kind of, the tape is so thin that they really disappear once you burnish it in and there's all kinds of wrinkles and stuff. So the edges really kind of just start to blend in nicely. And this can take a very long time 
and you'll decide when you feel like you're done. Things that don't show up when, when this is really shiny, once you put the antiquing, the secret antiquing formula, not so secret, it is, you use acrylic paint to do the antiquing part of this process. That's all you need is some acrylic paint. The groove, it really makes the grooves and things start to pop. It is pretty shiny now. And if that's the look you want, a really glossy, shiny look, then you might be done. But, but, you don't have to stop here. You can give your piece an aged look by using some acrylic paint. And I'm going to use black paint because that is the color that many silver metals get when they oxidize. And now you want your brush to be quite dry. You, want, you don't want to have a wet brush. And you want to just rub on a coat of black paint into all of the nooks and crannies. So you want to get into all the grooves and corners in your piece. Do you want it to stay in all of the corners? And then the next step is to rub the paint off, but just the high points. You don't want to rub it all, the paint out of all of those grooves. So you just rub gently on the top surface. If you rub with a flat surface off your cloth or a towel and Switch, switch to a clean area once, uh, once you get when one area becomes saturated with paint. Swap over to another area, a clean surface, and rub some more. If you keep rubbing with a dirty area of towel, you'll just put paint back into the onto the surface. So you have to move occasionally swap to a clean clean part of your paper towel and there you go there is my my pinky ATC 